In clinic today, we were talking about the Zernike polynomials and how especially the higher order aberrations are difficult to conceptualize. So here's one simple way you can physically demonstrate the optical properties of the Zernike tree. So remember, these are the monochromatic aberrations that use one wavelength of light, so it doesn't include chromatic aberration. And we'll be using a white light source, which is not monochromatic, but it gets the point across. So zero order aberration is just piston, which is the wavelength of light. You can think of it like a piston on an engine. The first order aberrations include tilt on the x and y axis, which can be demonstrated using a free prism lens. So notice how the light is offset from the lens frame. That's pretty simple. So remember, neither the zero or the first order aberrations are true aberrations because they don't actually degrade the quality of the optical system. The first of the true aberrations are the second order aberrations, also called lower order aberrations, which includes defocus, which we can approximate using a trusty 20 diopter lens. If you focus the light on a single point and move it back and forth, you can bring it in and out of focus. Uh, think of it like sphere on a prescription. Second order aberrations also include astigmatism, which can be demonstrated using the cylinder free lens. Um, since the light is only being refracted over one meridian, we can expect this focal line instead of a focal plane, um, as one axis of this lens has no power. So now moving on to the higher order aberrations, the major third order aberration um, includes coma, which we can demonstrate by focusing light onto a single point using that lens again. And then if we kind of tilt the lens around, we can induce this comet tail to form, which is why it's called coma. You can think of causes for this, like decentered ablations on um, you know, laser refractive surgery, for example. So the hardest to conceptualize probably is trefoil, which you can think of as elliptical coma. So one way you can kind of group these is you can think of astigmatism like elliptical defocus and trefoil like elliptical coma. So we'll use our cylindrical lens again. And if we introduce tilt into that system and kind of finesse it a little bit, we get this three pronged uh, trident kind of shape that characterizes trefoil. This is probably one of the least influential in the optical system. Then the last of the major aberrations is the uh, fourth order, which includes spherical aberration, which again, we can get out our 20 diopter lens, um, focus it to a nice point, and we know it's in focus in this case because all kind of the grime on the lens is being focused. And then we notice there's this halo of light around our main focal point, which is indicating that not all of the light rays entering the lens are landing on exactly the same point. And that's, you know, has to do with the spherical nature of the lens, even though these are aspheric lenses. But Hopefully that was helpful and um, just one way to kind of conceptualize and start thinking about the uh, higher and lower order aberrations.